unless you're doing it to harm, so in other words, you're causing trouble, when has the idea of asking questions ever been a problem in society? Where it seems today, and uh, not to harp on about social justice warriors, but in various aspects of society, to even ask a question, you know, like, I would like to understand this, and this might get me some flack, I would like to ask the question, I'll just use the transgender as an issue. Someone who grew up biologically male, who transitions to um, being female, right? 100% support, you're, I'm with you all the way. Who then competes in a physical sport with the, um, the, the, the benefits of growing up male and having all that testosterone. I'd like to ask the question, is that fair? Now me literally asking that question, I, I could get kicked back for that. But I mm. genuinely want to know is that fair? I want to know, is the fair on the muscle mass, on the different bone structure? If it's a, is a physical game like one, a striking game, there were some examples in MMA of a of a, a transgender woman being there who the females in that thing said they've never been so hit, hit so hard in all their life. I, I'd like to ask those questions. Now, me asking that question here publicly might get me flack, but it's a valid question. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think that's... I mean, that, that's an area of the debate that I think is, um, yeah, like a, the, the, the sporting question. I mean, at firstly, I don't really want to touch it, for, for, but not because it's so controversial, more like I, I, I kind of don't care about it in the sense that, I mean, and I understand why people do. And I mean, there was a tennis player recently who was uh, hitting out against uh, a famous female tennis player. Oh, was saying that never all over. It was never, that's right. Yeah, he yeah. was saying that, that uh, trans women shouldn't be able to play in the, the women's uh, well, you know what she did? She, apparently she said something like that and she got a lot of stick. And so she actually went, okay, I'll, I won't say it anymore. I'm going to go away and do some research. Mm. And then she came back and she was more solid. And this is a woman who was one of the first high-profile lesbians in the world who came out, fought for lesbian rights. Probably one of the reasons that the trans community can have some of the freedoms. I'm not saying they've got an easy road. They've got today is because a woman like Navarrete Oliver. And now she's, you know, she's somewhat of a pariah. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's a, it's a genuine. I think I think you're right to say it's a question that needs to be talked about. I mean, the. I, I mean, this is. I mean, look, Mike. I do have a kind of overall point I'd like to. Yeah, sure, go for go it. Here, which is, Shall is I a, stop? I'll just shut up for a bit. And let you no, no, no. Look, <laughs> uh, look. It's, geez, it's your show. Uh, <laughs> That's but, our show. <laughs> it's good. It's very democratic of you. <laughs> but no, but I, I take it that I mean the general issue here is just, I don't want to get too much in the sporting question because I sure. don't really have. Clear, clear thoughts about it, um, but the the I think the general issue here, which is the more philosophical one about about asking questions and where you stop with that, I take it that there's so I, I would like to make a distinction with hate speech between second person and third person hate speech. That okay. is, if I if I shout an ethnic slur at someone, yeah. like that's what a second person directly directed at that person. That kind of that hate speech is is clearly direct, and it's it's the idea that that's some somehow similar to an assault, for example, is is much clearer than it is in the third person. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff now, I mean, the Jordan Peterson case is a really clear example of this. That talking not to someone but about them, even in the most scholarly terms, is considered possibly to be a form of of hate speech. Now. I won't say that that marry, that that worry is totally baseless, right? The worry, the concern there is that. People saying things in the third person about, say, the, the transgender community can harm them, and you know, at a, at a subjective level, right? It, it can make them, you know, people feel attacked, bad, you know, more than bad, you know, re really damage them. The problem with that is, though, that I, I take it in the end, there's there's no clear dividing line between the the speech that might have those negative effects and might not. I mean, this mm -hmm. is where the, the question of effects comes in because it's it's taken that certain forms of speech inevitably have certain negative effects and other forms of speech are just okay. And I think that's that's basically incorrect, right? I think it's possible for forms of speech to... I mean, anything anyone says can, will have all kinds of effects, right? That it'll influence people in all kinds of different ways. Mm -hmm. So, for example, it's true that if you if you let like a racist speak on a college campus, which is something people are very concerned about, it might inspire people who listen to them to become racist. Mm -hmm. It might also encourage people, you know, people might listen to it and think, what a load of bullshit, and they'll, they'll fight the other way. Or something. Yeah. Right? And that really is, is the variability I'm talking about, that it's – and 
it's it's not because I'm a kind of liberal free speech advocate. It's it's just because I think the the idea here is that that people are I'm going to paraphrase. Uh, Michel Foucault, the philosopher I mainly work on here, but he, he has this great phrase. He, he said in an interview, he said, people's minds aren't made of soft wax. They, they react to things. And I take it that people, that this debate revolves as if people are made of soft wax, right? That if, if someone says something offensive, it will just damage people. If someone says something racist, it will just convince everyone to be racist. I mean, we know this isn't the case. If this were the case, uh, we'd everyone would still be as racist and misogynistic and homophobic as they were. There'd be no chance of progress because no one would ever develop ideas against that in the first place. Mm. The only way these ideas, I take it, have developed is in reaction to the existence of homophobia and misogyny and racism. So the idea that it's it's a huge goal to close down Mm -hmm. all those forms of speech, I think totally misunderstands the way political dynamics work. Right, and, that, and that's my concern about this stuff. It's that it's possibly a tactical own goal to to close down that space. And I tend to think of that. I mean, I'm not the only person to say this, but that the rise of Trump, at least in part, is attributable to a reaction against the closing down of that space, and that the way the left have by and large reacted to the Trump phenomenon, which is to double down mm. and demand that free speech, you know, whatever, be closed down even further, um, simply provokes the very phenomenon that drove Trump in the first place. I mean, well, and one of the ironies is, is, of course, years gone past, and we're talking sort of maybe more America, but in general, the left has been the bastion of free speech. And now it seems to be the left is the one fighting against free speech. I mean, you see it on the college campuses. I had a conversation with someone the other day about stand up comedy. And I'm like, who gets to make the jokes? And uh, this person was basically saying, you know, you can't make a joke about this group unless you're a part of it and this group unless you're a part of it and this group. And I'm like, okay, well, that's the death of stand-up comedy. Um, So the other thing it may do, I was thinking as you were speaking about shutting down those areas, is the other thing it may do is also send that conversation underground. Mm. And that racist who is standing up at the university speaking um, I'm not saying is it better, is it worse, but what would happen if that then became a behind doors conversation and that community grew out of the public sphere? Is that even more dangerous still than within the public sphere? 